Hey, what's up YouTube? Once again, welcome to another episode Yeah, here on Sam's Creative Toolbox. Like always, my name is Sam. You can also find me here on Facebook. And this video is all about camera movement in After Effects. I will show you several techniques on how I create my own camera animations, the camera movement. And yeah, like always, let's meet in After Effects and have some fun. Okay guys, before I will show you how to animate the camera, I will first give you some very basic information. And the most important one is that cameras only work in 3D space or with uh, 3D layers. So to turn a 2D layer into a 3D layer, you just have to click this cube icon right here. As you can see, for example, for all my HUD layers, so just these circle lines right here. So yeah, like I said, just click on this uh, cube icon to turn it into a 3D layer. If you are confused, by the way, because why I didn't check um, some other uh, 3D layers like these uh, cylinders right here, it's actually very easy because I applied an effect called CC Cylinder and this effect kinda does the same as clicking this cube icon, so it also turns this 2D layer or this 2D world map, for example, into a 3D object, so it's also available for my camera. Okay guys, so if you want to create a new camera, just simply right click on your mouse and choose new and camera, or also go to layer, new and choose camera. As you can see, I already created a camera which is called camera 1. So yeah, once you've created a camera, you will see a window popping up which looks something like that. And yeah, I think if you see it for the first time, it may look a bit confusing because of all that numbers, this camera, um, yeah, kind of sketch right here. But it's actually very easy, so the first thing you may want to do is change the name. But to be honest, I always leave it at default, so for example, camera 1, camera 2, and so on. Then after that, I usually think about the focal length, which you can see right here on the preset. And it's the same on your, uh, as on your DSLR or your film camera. So for example, if you choose a 50mm lens, you will get that super um, fish-eye distorted look. And if you, for example, choose a 200mm, you will get that yeah, tele-zoom effect. You can also enter some um, custom values. You can do that right here under focal length. Just click and type in any value you want. If you, um, yeah, like I did, select 50mm, it will stay yeah, kind of neutral. And yeah, then you will have some other settings or numbers like zoom, angle of view and film size. But yeah, to be honest, I never changed some of these values. I don't know exactly how they work. So I would recommend, especially if you are a beginner, to just leave everything as default. And the last thing you will have is this depth of field. For this tutorial, I will uh, disable it because I will make in part 2, I will show you exactly how to work with depth of field because it's also kind of complicated as a beginner. So yeah, like I said, um, these are all your settings. And oh, before I forget, you also get this type thing right here. So you have a two-node camera and a one-node camera. The difference is that a one-node camera, I think it kind of rotates around itself. And the two-node camera has a thing called point of interest. Um, I usually recommend to use a two-node camera because I personally find it a bit easier to animate and to work with. But yeah, it's up to you to choose and also to yeah, just try out which one you like better. Okay guys, so once you've typed in all your values, you um, are finished with your basic settings, you just click OK. Um, yeah, don't panic if you want to go back and change some things, you just double click this um, camera or go to layer and camera settings. You can always go back and change everything you want. Okay, then the next uh, basic um, information is that once you create the camera, you can always see it here in active camera. You will have camera 1. So let's create a second camera, for example, which is called camera 2. You will also see camera 1 and camera 2. So as you can see right now is camera 2 selected and you can always switch between, I don't know, all the cameras you have. Okay. By the way, you can also of course uh, select front to have front view or a top view. 
and also a custom view. So yeah, this window here is quite nice to help you animate your, um, your camera or your project. Oh, sorry, let's select camera one. And also a very cool trick is to select this layout icon. And as you can see, currently I've selected a few, but you can also choose, for example, to have two screens. So for example, two views horizontal. And as you can see, I have now two, um, two windows. Um, the one you have selected has these yellow um, edges right here, so you can also choose two different kind of uh, views. So for example, I want for the right one my camera one, and for the left one I want the top camera, just as an example. You can also change these or even activate four um, screens. It's really up to you how to do that. But I usually work with uh, one view or two views horizontal. But as I said, it's up on you to decide which of these um, views fits your workflow. Okay, so let's delete the camera two and select our camera one. And now I will show you um, two ways about animating your camera. The first one is with um, the camera tool or um, yeah, the unified camera tool, which is in the toolbar on your program. You can also hit C as a shortcut. And if you click and hold, you will have a lot of different options. So you have, for example, the unified camera tool, which is a combination of these three below. Then you have the orbit camera tool for rotation, the track X and Y, so you can only move it in 2D space, and the track Z camera tool, which is something like zoom. So you can only zoom in and zoom out. So for example, yeah, let's select the track Z camera tool. And as you can see, I can now just zoom in and zoom out. And if I, for example, choose um, Orbit Camera Tool, I can only rotate it. But uh, I usually work with the Unified Camera Tool. And it's actually very cool because you can work very fast instead of always go back and change um, to a different tool. And to work with the Unified Camera Tool, you will have to use your mouse. So let's say you want to zoom in, you simply have to right click your mouse and then just move it um, yeah, forward or backwards to zoom in and out. If you want to um, orbit the camera, you just have to right, yeah, sorry, left click your mouse. And as you can see, I can now rotate my camera. And if I want to move around my object, I simply have to push my scroll wheel. And by doing that, I can move my object around in 2D space. So as you can see, it's actually very, very easy to move around or to animate your camera. I would recommend to just simply use some of your projects to just practice and get used to the camera workflow. And yeah, now if you want to animate your camera, you simply have to use keyframes. So just open up your transform settings. And as I said, I have this two node camera, so I will have position and the point of interest. So let's go to the beginning. And then please click on these uh, stopwatches for point of interest and also for position. And yeah, then let's, for example, zoom in a bit. So let's say I want to start, I don't know, maybe somewhere in the left corner and also zoom in a bit more. And then I want to, um, yeah, about the time of two seconds, I want to, let's say, zoom out a bit, get a more, um, yeah, more wide shot, something like that. And also maybe um, rotate it. Okay. And now, as you can see, I can I start right here, and then the camera moves a bit outwards. So as you can see, it's really, really easy to animate the camera. And of course, you also have different keyframe options. So for example, you could select all your keyframes and hit F9. So it's called Easy Ease, which means that it kind of fades in, gets faster, and then slows down uh, at the end. You can also right click and choose keyframe assistant and choose easy ease in and easy ease out. And if you really want to get um, super pro, you could also select your keyframes and then click on this um, graph editor um, icon right here. And then you'll have, um, yeah, also your uh, keyframe curves and you can also edit them separately. So you can also influence the speed and um, yeah, the position and everything. But to be honest, I never worked with um, this graph editor because to be honest, I still don't know how to work with this graph editor exactly. So like I said, I usually only work with my keyframe and my timeline. Okay guys, so this is um, the first way about 
uh, animating your camera, I will now open up a second project and show you a second very cool way to animate the camera. So let me give it a couple of seconds about, yeah, camera to number two, don't save. And yeah, as you can see right now, no, you don't can see it. Let's wait a couple of seconds. Okay guys, as you can see I have this new project with something like a slideshow, so just some Polaroid image frames with my New York holiday photos in it. Um, yeah, here's the construction comp, so it's a very high resolution, let me show you that. Yeah, 9500 pixels, so a very huge texture. And then I just placed some, yeah, some images on it. That's also, by the way, the same technique I use, for example, for my horror um, template. I just use a very large wood texture and then place my blood, my images, my knife and everything yeah, on top of this texture. And then I took um, this really huge uh, or large texture and put it in new composition which has the size of HD. So as you can see it's actually very uh, cropped right now. And then I want to create a new camera. So like before, layer new camera. I will leave all the settings as default. and. Make sure to check two node camera, click OK. And now instead of animating this camera, I will now simply create a null object and use that as a controller for my camera. So just to stay organized, I will call it con camera controller and also make sure to enable um, 3D object. Then select my camera, use the pick web tool to pick web this camera to the camera controller. And yeah, by doing that, your null object is now able to control the camera any way you want. So you can again move it left, right, zoom in, zoom out, and also rotate it. So just to tell you the differences between the first method and this method, I would recommend to use the first method with the unified camera tool for uh, more complex projects like uh, yeah, my news intros. And if you have uh, some simpler um, project like this, um, yeah, this slideshow right here, I would recommend to use this camera controller because for these kind of projects I think this one is a bit more easier than the unified camera tool. Okay, so like I said, instead of camera I will now animate my null object, so hit P for position and also R for rotation because maybe I want to change the rotation, especially in the Z um, axis. So I will also check this stopwatch and yeah, then just take my camera tool or the camera controller and move it for example to the beginning which is my yeah my new, my new York title right here let's zoom in a bit rotate it a bit okay and then for example I want to stay there for two seconds so move forward for two seconds again hit the keyframe button right here and then I want for example um, one second as a transition for um, to the next image and then just take your camera controller and move it to the next image and so on and so on. And yeah, for example, something like that. Let's zoom out a bit. Okay. Let's also stay there for two seconds. Sorry, also uh, make a keyframe for Z rotation. Then move forward again for about two seconds. Okay, again, um, click here this keyframe icon and then again one second forward and again move your um, null object all the way down and zoom in a bit. This time I also want to change the rotation so just play around with that. Zoom in a bit more and yeah as you can see I now get this kind of good, great looking animation. Okay and yeah this is a very cool method like I said to animate your camera about um, like something like a texture. Um, before I finish I want to show you one problem that may appear. So let's say I want to uh, move again to the next image. So move forward for a couple of seconds and then take your um, null object again and now move up. Okay, change the rotation. And as you can see right now After Effects simply creates uh, this kind of curve right here. And sometimes you don't want that because you want your camera to really move on this um, particular point without making this slightly um, rotation to the side and you can easily fix that by uh, selecting your pen tool and your convert vertex tool and then just click on this um, yeah path point right here 
And as you can see, you now have this super linear um, yeah, curve. And After Effects or the camera really travels super straight to this point and then to the next point. So it's really up on you if you want that kind of curvy look. Um, you can leave it as a BZ curve, but if you want to really travel exactly where you want it to be, then use this vertex tool to make it a linear path. Okay guys, that's it for camera movement today. Like always, if you find this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and yeah, like always, stay creative and have fun.